Hello and welcome to the program from beautiful Miami in Florida. Today we'll explain how to train to improve power. The focus is on developing speed strength because tennis is a power dominant sport and hence knowing how to develop power becomes a necessity for any coach or player. You will learn about what it means to be a powerful athlete, what power training is, how to develop power, what strength is, and fifth, why developing strengths for power makes sense. Power, which can be expressed as force times distance over time, is commonly referred to as speed strength and is the factor behind performing work in a quick or short period of time. In other words, power is the time rate of work. Being a powerful athlete means being able to exert force in order to handle the resistance of one's own body weight by performing explosive movements in a coordinated and athletic manner. High power enables the athlete to hit powerful ground strokes, perform a strong serve, change direction quickly, dive and return serves effectively, perform vertical and lateral jumps, and accelerate about the court in an efficient manner. So what is power training? Speed strength training or power training revolves around developing the body's synchronized activation of motor urines and fast twitch muscle fibers. This means that power exercises train the nervous system to collaborate effectively with the muscular system. To describe it simply, Potential energy developed in power exercises is converted to enhance the speed with which an athlete can perform work or an athletic movement. Okay, so how can one develop power effectively? There are two prominent avenues for improving power. On the one hand, the athlete performs high resistance power training exercises in the gym. This relates to strengths for power and power exercises introduced in chapter six of advanced concepts of strength and conditioning for tennis. On the other hand, the athlete does speed strength conditioning drills on the court, which can be thought of as low resistance power training exercises. And chapter seven provides a great variety of exercises one can use. It is important to point out that the strengths power resistance training exercises must complement the speed strength conditioning exercises to achieve optimal results. In other words, weightlifting in the gym and conditioning on the court go hand in hand. Whether the athlete focuses on the weightlifting or conditioning depends on the overall training emphasis and whether the athlete is in competition or not. Generally, when the athlete is in or close to competition, the training emphasis should be on conditioning. Also, the athlete should have corrected any speed economy deficiencies, such as muscular imbalances, before focusing on the various speed strength conditioning exercises. Doing so, ensures effective speed strength conditioning training since less resistive forces are working against the athlete's effort. According to Newton's second law of motion, force F can be expressed as mass M of an object times acceleration A of the object or F equals M times A. Generally, if a force acts upon an object and causes the, the displacement of the object, work occurred upon the object. In other words, in order for a force to qualify as having done work on an object, the force must cause its displacement. Also, the force must be applied in the same direction as the displacement to be considered positive work. A vertical force cannot cause a horizontal displacement. 
This is referred to as strength with respect to exercise. For example, during bench pressing, the athlete lies flat on a bench and applies force vertically to move the bar off the chest. Once the bar moves vertically, work is being done to move the bar. If the bar doesn't move, then no work is being done. In other words, work, W, can be expressed as force, F, times displacement, D, or W equals F times D. With respect to exercise, strength is the equivalent to physical work since strength is defined as force times distance. With respect to exercise, strength is the equivalent to physical work since strength, S, is defined as force times distance, or S equals force times distance, which is M times A times D. Since power is the time rate of work, force times distance over time, and work, force times distance, is the equivalent to strength, then maximizing the athlete's force output will also cause maximum power output, which is why strength training precedes power training. In order to maximize the athlete's strengths, force output must be maximized which means that the resistance should increase while the velocity of the movement decreases and the distance remains the same. Slower velocity with heavier resistance leads to a greater muscle fiber recruitment. Also, stabilization properties are going to improve due to the prolonged motor unit control mechanism. I need you to listen carefully now because this is important. It is really important to understand that absolute muscular strength development is not the goal. Instead, the focus must be on maximizing body mass adjusted muscular strength because it is highly related to peak performance. This means that the athlete must be strong for his or her size. While playing tennis, the athlete needs to control the body during stroke production, which means controlling dynamic stability while applying force and moving in different directions. If a tennis player is trained like a bodybuilder, the athlete will become too heavy due to too much muscle mass, which decreases his or her ability to change direction, meaning center of mass control, effectively. In other words, if the athlete is too big, they don't have the ability to move as fluently as they need to. During power training, the speed at which work can be performed is going to be maximized, which means high movement velocities. High velocities reduce overall force output due to muscle fiber recruitment limitations, but also neural control mechanisms are reduced as well because there's no time to think during the action. Well, that's it again for today's episode. As usual, opinions differ. What's your point of view? Let us know below in the comment section. A brand new episode will be available next Sunday. So make sure you don't miss it and subscribe. In the meantime, I recommend you watch some of the previous episodes. You should really watch them all. If you like what you saw, tell your friends. I'm sure they will appreciate it. I'm Philipp Halfmann. Thank you for watching and Auf Wiedersehen. Tennis Conditioning TV episodes are licensed under Creative Commons. You are welcome to link or embed these videos, forward them to others and share these ideas with people you know. Brought to you by Advanced Concepts of Strength and Conditioning for Tennis. Available at TennisConditioningBook.com Music by Dan O at DanOSongs.com